Welcome to Community Connections with Children's Services Council of St. Lucie County. I am just one of your hosts, Sean Boyle, with me is... Ashley Ma. And welcome to the half hour every Sunday on 104.5 The Flame radio program. And once a month, thanks to a great partnership with WLX-TV, um, the St. Lucie County Education Channel, we are also a monthly television program. Now, if you're a radio listener and you're hearing our voices on a Sunday and you want to know what these faces look like, <laughs> which are clearly built for radio... <laughs> except for my co-host here, uh, you can go to WLX-TV on Facebook or go look up YouTube, uh, WLX-TV St. Lucie, or they obviously play on your local uh, cable provider. But we spend this half hour together, besides talking about all the various channels that we're on, <laughs> we spend this half hour to talk about what resources and things that are available for families, children and families in our community we call St. Lucie. Now, at the Children's Services Council, we do five things for our community. And those five things are, one, make sure every baby's a healthy baby, two, stop child abuse before it happens, three, keep kids off the streets. I know, <laughs> you threw me off. Four, keep them in school, and five, keep them off drugs, alcohol, and other risky behaviors by offering programs and resources for all families in our community. I was counting to make sure I got all of them. I saw it in the corner of my eye, and I was, kind of, I was like, is she, is she mimicking me? No, I wasn't. I was just making sure you got them all. Um, so all the programs that we work with, as Sean talked about, go fall into those five priority areas. And there are a couple of different ways where you can learn more about all of those programs. Um, one of them is on our website, which is cscslc.org. We have an extensive list there of the programs that we're working with, along with contact information, success stories. Um, and recently, I don't know that we've talked about this on the radio show, um, we track what they do, how they perform all year long. And you can also get the program accountability report on our website to identify um, exactly how each one of our programs are performing throughout the year. So there's a lot of information there on our website. We also have a printed guide of all of our funded programs, and this is the newly updated guide. So inside our family guide to programs is a brief description of each one of those programs that we're working with this year along with a contact number and then for the programs that are location based there's an address as well so for our after school programs that are housed at different areas throughout the community those are all there and then on the back there's information about those five priority areas so you can memorize them like sean did um, along with our st lucie reads initiative which we will talk a little bit more about later <laughs> and if you're like sean in the modern world why do we need paper well first of all <laughs> We're always going to have paper, right? Yes. I'm looking at the table here. There's paper all around us. <laughs> we, but, uh, we do have an app that has all these programs in, in category area. And you can also touch button, uh, phone, map, um, and get more information. But again, it's a way to make sure that you, the listener and or the viewer, are able, whether it be for your family, for your grandkids, for your nieces and nephews, neighbors, congregation Whoever. members, can connect them to the resources that exist in our community. That's right. Um, and another way that we have been, I'll say, answering questions, keeping in touch with people, um, is on our Facebook page. So Facebook is a great outlet for us to share information about things that are happening throughout the community, events that are happening. Um, we share fun tips for parents on there, just all kinds of stuff that we are able to share there. But we also recently have been getting a lot of questions from parents. I'm looking for a summer camp. When is your summer camp list going to come out? Um, so Facebook is a great way to stay in touch with us as well because we do use it as um, sort of uh, an information and communication tool for a lot of our families. And we want to hear from you. So if you're on Facebook, and let's face it, let's be honest, you know you're on Facebook. <laughs> If you're on Facebook, look up Children's Services Council, St. Lucie County. Like our page. Um, like you said, we post on there nearly every day inspirational messages, things to do, resources. But also, if you have a suggestion that you want us to cover in an upcoming show, whether it be the radio or the TV version, because we are multimedia, <laughs> uh, uh, post it on Facebook and we'll make sure we cover it. Yeah, definitely. Because this show is all about you, the listener, and the viewer. That's right. We get to say, and the viewer. All right, so before we get to our guests, we have a couple of updates. First of all, it's spring break. It is. So your children are at home? They are. Your They're, husband's at home? He, he also is, yes. Uh, we were joking about a text message he sent me before we got here this morning. Um, but he is, he is, their spring break's aligned this year. He works at IRSC, so he's off this week while they are off, so it's been nice. Um, maybe more so for me than for him. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 
it's been nice. They uh, they've been taking advantage of a lot of fun things. Yesterday they did the Oxbow. Um, they went walking. They've got plans today to visit uh, a library, so they're making a trip. A little foreshadowing with foreshadow. our show here. Um, but he's. We have a lot planned for them this week, so they're not bored. Well, I'm glad you said walking. Uh, oh, gosh. Because that brings up our <laughs> ongoing segment of. Have you, the listener and viewer, joined the billion with a B, as you billion always say, billion step walk march challenge? Challenge. Billion step. I, I got the B part and I <laughs> blew the rest of it. Billion step challenge. In St. Lucie County, we as a community are trying to reach a billion steps walked uh, to encourage, obviously, um, activity and healthy lifestyles. And what you can do is you can go to healthystlucie.org and you can sign up as an individual. Um, and track your steps and if you have a smartphone most smartphones track your steps or if you have a smart watch or a Fitbit, Fitbit or whatever those things are that can track <laughs> it and what you do is you track your steps um, and we as a community are going to get to a billion steps I think we're we are we are on a way um, but in order to do it you have to sign up and it's a fun way to build kind of like mini competitions right, right. so uh, we have a children's services council team we do that has Four members on it? I think there's more than four. Four and a half members, um, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Four and a half members. Uh, but uh, please go to HealthyStLucie.org, sign up. There's even an app so you can track your steps yep. and track how you compare to all your friends. You can see how you compare to Ashley and I. Uh, you can set up a team or you can join our team, but become part of the challenge. Now, I brought with me two numbers. <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh dear. So anyone who's listened to the radio program or even watched the radio program or watched the television version because we brought this up last time, Ashley has signed up to be part of the challenge. I have. You have? Mm -hmm. um, and be part of the Children's Services Council team. Mm -hmm. But you don't track your steps. That's not true. I did. I know. You walked 407 steps on Sunday. <laughs> that's so, not, okay. That's so, not entirely fair. So because... I, brought, I brought two numbers with me. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to read it to you. Ashley has walked during the challenge 137,996 steps, which sounds like a lot, right? I mean... I have walked, because I track my steps, and because I take this challenge seriously, 424,574. So we need help. You, we need people to join our team. Uh, go to HealthyStLucie.org, sign up. In all seriousness, you have been tracking your steps. So a let little me bit. Explain. Mm -hmm. My watch tracks my steps. So if I take my watch off and continue walking, I don't input those. <laughs> so, or conversely, you could keep your watch on to track all your steps, it does. and you'd have great input. It does. I have to charge it every now. All right. Then. All right. So anyway, my poor watch. I told Ashley I was going to keep continuing to bring That's this up. Okay until she tracks her steps on a continuous basis. But you can join well, our team. Hold on. You can join the billion step effort. Uh, we should give a shout out to Detective Danny at Fort Pierce Police Department because the only reason that I opened my app to sync everything this weekend was because she tagged me when she heard the radio show. Right, so really, thank you, you, Danny. you can thank Danny, but you can thank me because I'm the one that keeps bringing it up, <laughs> yes. which apparently isn't working. So if, All of those things. If you know Ashley and you're on Facebook, make sure you tag her to ask her if she's tracking her steps. You can send me reminders, I'm okay with that. All right, but Go to HealthyStLucie.org, sign up. It's a fun way. We're joking, but it's a fun way uh, to become active and encourage those that you love to become active as well. And join our team. Yes, please. 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 Apparently we need help. Now, we, there is a, an event coming up in April, the Family there Fun is. Fair. There is an event coming up in April, and we um, have signed on to be one of the sponsors of the event. Um, and if you have listened to the show for a long time, you will know what event we're talking about because it's one of our most fun things I think that we, we bring get a basketball to, yeah. to it. It's, it usually takes place in Mar late March, early April, yeah. so of course we bring a basketball Yeah, group. and Sean plays basketball all day long while we're there. With kids. Um, but the Family Fun Fair is an event that is hosted by the Early Learning Coalition, and it's a really great opportunity to get your family out. Um, they always do a great um, theme, so they have all of their child care centers participate. Um, they have great story time activities for all the kids who come. They have lots of fun vendors and things to do there, um, and it's usually a great time. So this year, the Family Fun Fair is Saturday, April 7th, um, again at Lawnwood Stadium. Are you writing that down? Um, at Lawnwood Stadium in Fort Pierce. We will be there. Um, lots of our funded programs will also be there. 
sharing information. Um, it's a great time to get information from them about summer camps um, because after April, it is like a quick sprint to the <laughs> quick summer. Sprint out the door. Um, but we will be there. We'll, of course, keep talking about it on the radio show, so stay tuned for that. But it's, it's always a really great so time. So mark your calendars for those people who say there's nothing to do for families. Oh, yes. You're there's... going to do the voice? No, I No, don't. okay. She, sometimes she does the voice. <laughs> uh, if you're looking for something to do, mark your calendar April 7th, which is a great segue to yes, our guests who are waiting patiently because there's always something going on <laughs> there where they're at. There is. That is a really good point. Um, so we've got great partners in the St. Lucie County Library System, um, and two of them are with us today. And I think that in recent years, um, what you guys have been able to accomplish at the libraries is just super impressive. And I think we're really lucky here in St. Lucie County that we have a library system that is thriving. Um, and you guys have really incorporated ways and programs and events for people to get behind and get involved in. So thank you both for coming. We've got Mark Freed and Alicia Bell with us today. Um, so I, I think maybe one of the first things that we should start with is an overview, you know, in the event that someone is not familiar with where all of the libraries are, um, we have a new one this year that we get to talk about. So I don't know, Mark, if you want to kind of give us an overview of the locations um, and, you know, where people can find out more information about the hours that they're open and things like that. Of course. We have locations um, north to south throughout the county, starting up on the border at Lakewood Park and then moving south down to the Zorn Neal Hurston branch, and then by the marina at the uh, Susan Room Kilmer branch, then scooting down towards the Port St. Lucie end of the county, we have the Port St. Lucie branch. We also have the Morningside branch. We have a joint use facility at the IRSC campus, and our newest location, the Paula A. Lewis branch, which is right off of Gatlin Boulevard. If you know where the Bass Pro Shop is, <laughs> yeah. right down the street. That's Everybody seemed, knows that's that. That's the landmark. <laughs> Everybody seems to know it. And the new coffee shop to be named soon going in. Oh, There's fancy. a Starbucks going in around the corner, which oh, nice. everybody is quite excited about. So I had the opportunity to attend the grand opening of the mm -hmm. new Paula nice. Lewis Library and was so impressed with the children's area that you guys have put in there. And I know that it has been a big draw for families in that area yes. Yes. Um, who are coming to check out all of the things that are happening down there. But it is a really great facility. It's been a great facility and not to sell short any of our <laughs> other locations because we've had active children's programming at all of our locations. Um, we are constantly looking to new, new things as the kids who go through our program get older, we started gearing some of our programs to still meet their needs, and then we're having the next wave of young kids. In libraries, we tend to see, as in school, cyclical. Mm -hmm. You know, we get the youngsters, they get a little bit older, and then they get into high school, and then we see their siblings come in, <laughs> and then their siblings come in. So we sort of get this, you know, circle pattern of families coming through, and we're at the point now where we're meeting the new families coming in while still providing awesome programs for the kids coming in and for anybody who wants to see a list of any of our events just go on to your phone your computer your tablet type in st lucie county library system i won't <laughs> hit you with the long address and dots and dashes Easy. st lucie county library system will show up at the top so um oh, well no i was just gonna say because you mentioned the events yeah. and i noticed you have a calendar in front of you and i've always <laughs> yes. i've always been impressed because um, we've tried to sync at least the children's activities yep. at the libraries with our community calendar and there's always great things happening at the mm -hmm. libraries and you know and i think most people are probably you know well obviously the people that come to the library are very <laughs> well aware but you know i was telling my son i remember one time you get, had a class about how to write graphic novels yes, uh, yes. and you know he was so impressed so <laughs> just while you got the calendar in front of you just to give our audience a little bit of a tease of what kind of activities happen at the library Ah, That's pretty so, small font. I don't know if you can yeah, read that. Yeah. With, with the long arms here, <laughs> I have to uh, hold out. We have, and Alicia will cover me because I know I will miss a whole bunch, <laughs> everything from rhythm and rhyme. We have steam-powered course steam STEM where it's learning and a little bit of experimentation and projects. We have Legos. We have movies. We have books. We have movies. We have books that were made into movies. Sometimes <laughs> one is better than the other. 
the book tends to win. We have technology classes also for the parents. So when you're watching your kids just taking over your phone, you're like, how are they doing that? We have classes so you can catch up to your young ones and say, oh, I know what you're doing. It's taught by a fifth grader, right? Yeah. Um, we have a wide range of programs, and I'll let Alicia cover the rest, and she's very active in all of them. Well, he, he got most of them. Um, <laughs> But uh, like Mark was saying, we start um, young, as early as infants. Uh, we do a baby program at Port St. Lucie Branch Library, and we're hoping to, at some point, do it at other branches. And up through um, story times, um, we also have a crazy math club that goes on at Lakewood Park and Zora Neale Hurston, so check those out. Um, contraption Faction, which is in, uh, is it Little Tykes or yeah. some, uh, a Morningside? Morningside and uh, Hurston offer some little tech programs for kids of different ages. So that is very cool. It is kind also, of check your calendars um, at times off for school, holidays, yes. long weekends. Try to offer. We more. will try to offer a lot of one off programs as something yeah, nice. to do because we all know that as much as we all love having our kids around the house, <laughs> you need to get them out of the house once in a while. So we try to do something that's fun and a little educational on the side without them realizing it. So you can, we've proven that you can have a lot of fun while you're learning. That is very cool. And I know you mentioned um, that we sort of see things happen in cycles. Um, and I know that we've got, you know, from the numbers that we have seen in just BPK programs and things like that, there's a big group of kids yes. coming in. Um, what is the the process for a parent to get a library card for their child and if someone is listening who doesn't have one what can they do easy okay. um, <laughs> be a resident of the county that's the first step uh, second step come in with your driver's license or ID card and a piece of mail with your current address and that's the easiest way um, we've had people come in they've just moved in they bring a copy of their lease and their driver's license mm -hmm. Um, we like to work with people. We love getting them signed up to be library card holders. Very good. It's, it's a great way to get wired into the community. That's a great first step. And you only have to be four years old to get one. So Perfect. <laughs> it's so pretty exciting. We obviously for want guys. all of our kids to get library yes, cards it's very exciting. and to kind of get used to going to the library. Mm -hmm. Now, I know from having you on past shows, you know, the library that I went to when I was younger, it's you guys have kind of evolved since then. I know there's a lot of digital. I know yes. you talked about digital books and digital yes. music, which I haven't told my son about it yet, <laughs> but the digital music part, but, but it's, it's, it's not just, you know, kind of for those viewers or listeners who are like, oh, you know, when I was a kid, I used to go to the library. Obviously, that structure, that component is still there, and you have all these activities, but it's also kind of kept up with the, the e-readers and mm -hmm. all the music being electronic and yes. stuff. Yeah, we have um, book -a tech programs, one-on-one -on -one sessions that... Uh, patrons can call in and sit down with somebody with questions about apps and software and devices. It's pretty popular. We have e-books, e-content for all ages, yep. uh, from Tumble Books up to a program we have, it's called Overdrive. So we have a little bit of something for everybody. And we have free music, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. uh, he fr uh, fr <laughs> <laughs> Freegal, which is, you know, um, you're allowed each week five downloads per card. So keep your card away from your son, <laughs> otherwise you're gonna find your music is gone very quick. And that's, it's almost overwhelming. There is so much available. Um, and if you visit the site through the library webpage, they'll regularly do postings. If somebody wins an award, somebody's famous, a milestone, they'll highlight their works and what they have in the system. Um, so we have people still read. Now it's just in a different format. Mm -hmm, right. An ebook is still reading. It just is a little bit easier. And as I'm finding, as I've hit middle age, the smaller fonts are a little bit harder to read. And my e-reader, I can just make them a little bit larger. Slow it up just yeah, a little just bit. a little bit. Um, so we have a little bit for everybody, but the core is still literacy. People are reading. They're learning. Um, literacy is changing with technology, and we're trying to help people keep on par and get the leg up as they move forward in life. So of all the activities that you offer for children, I'm kind of jumping all over uh -huh. the place, right? <laughs> all the activities, what, what would you say is the most popular one? The story times have to be the most popular at, at each of the branches. And they're, they're very interactive, uh, educational, fun programs. There's music, there's movement, there's books. Um, 
uh, hand plays. It, it, it becomes a, a really fun time for the kids. Yeah. yeah, as our communities are expanding and growing, it's a great way for people who are new to the community to meet other yes. parents. Mm -hmm. We'll see a lot of moms and dads who are brand new to the area and the and initial people they meet and talk to and hang out with are the story yeah, time folks programs. before yeah. their kids move on to school and then junior high. That's very cool. Yeah, social experience for mm -hmm. all ages, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. And I think the parents have just as much fun as the kids, but that, that's a little <laughs> secret. <laughs> we all we all share that secret. Um, so you guys, for the last several years, um, have done a really cool thing over the summer um, mm -hmm. that we get to kind of participate in a little bit, which we love. Um, I, and I know that probably not all the details are, are uh, unembargoed yet, but <laughs> <laughs> what can we share about the summer reading challenge that's happening this year? <laughs> well, first of all, it's going to be you. exciting. Um, <laughs> as you mentioned, we have some great folks that, through grants such as Children's Services Council and Baker and Taylor and the Friends of the Library and the St. Lucie Mets, have been able to help us to grow our summer reading programs to meet the needs of the youth of this county. Our big thing is we want to help prevent the summer slide, mm -hmm. which you hear quite often. Kids read a lot during school, school ends, <laughs> pause, school ends, <laughs> and then they start reading again in the fall. And for yeah. the first couple of weeks, they, you know, the skills have slid backwards. The teachers have to get them up to speed. So we're trying to combat that. The nice thing about with the library we really don't care what you read. Reading can be fun. It's not just the assignment. You want to read that science fiction novel, go for it. <laughs> you want to read about ducks, that's great. We're happy that you're reading. It keeps the wheels turning, it keeps the skills fresh, it keeps them growing. So when youth hit the next grade, they're not just at status quo, they've actually moved forward a little bit and they've also had some fun in the process. Um, Specifically, the theme this year? Uh, libraries Rock, which is obviously a favorite okay. <laughs> in all the years I've done it. So um, that should bring some fun programming to the branches and involve the kids. Uh, we'll be doing our science experiments like we've done in past years. Those have been pretty popular. Um, Controlled chaos some days, well, yeah, still well, you know. <laughs> That's half the fun, right? Yes. It's the summer. I mean, you have flying marshmallows at the count of three. Yes. Yes. Oh. yes, and we wear capes, we're superheroes, you know. But We'll stop by on that. That's fun, that's fun. The, with the summer reading, in a nutshell, what it boils down to is depending on the age grouping, uh, youth will get a log, and as they read, there's usually a reward for the midway point and then a bigger reward at the end for the kids who complete the log. Uh, we tend to focus on 12 books, 12 hours, so that way we're pushing the kids that really like to read now, you know, crank it out, keep reading. For the ones that are struggling a little bit, we want to make it achievable. Mm -hmm. It's a goal, but they still have to work a little bit, but it's reachable. Um, so that way we're working with the parents also so it's not a grind for the younger kids if parents work with the child that's fabulous our big goal is literacy you know we just want people to read we want the kids to read we want the parents to read with and to their children it's all about the reading and having a little bit of fun and in the a little process. bit of fun <laughs> and you have books for all, all ages, ages all levels yes so Obviously, the first, if you've never been to a library before, you've, I think I counted it right, seven locations? Eight, uh, seven, well, eight? Six, yeah. seven, seven locations, and what's great about all the locations is it's north, it's yeah. south, it's east, <laughs> it's west, it's over. pretty much everywhere. Yeah, kind of spread out. Um, even located in neighborhoods. Yeah. Um, but the first thing when they go to libraries, they probably need to go to the front desk and get a library card, right? Because that's kind of like the point, ticket, yeah. uh, Good point. <laughs> ticket to ticket all the... Ticket to read. Ticket to read, right, right. <laughs> um, and then... So for those families that are maybe come to the library the first time, you told you said they need to bring a driver's license or some form of ID, mm -hmm. uh, something with their address on it, a piece of mail or something. Yes. Obviously, a child's not going to have a driver's <laughs> no, license, so not the, yet. the parent can <laughs> vouch for all of them. And you you assign library cards four years of age and, and up. up. Yep. And do they get the library card right then and there? Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Oh, so all, parents oh, wow. take pictures. Oh, that's that is exciting. Yeah. So that's what we're going to encourage every <laughs> grandparent. Parent that is watching the show to uh, uh, make that effort um, 
now. As soon as you hear this yeah. show, go into your library. If you <laughs> don't have a library card, this week is a great time. Oh, yeah. If you get to the library card, speaking for a friend, and you haven't, you know, used it in a while, and you're wondering, man, you're, I wonder if I own any money. You're always <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> always welcome back. So uh, make sure that you renew that license. But that's, I think it's important that that you know, we, we talk about all the time that families are always like, is there anything to do in mm -hmm. our community? Um, and there's always something to do at the library. Even if it's not a planned activity, it's something that the family can direct by. Let's all go pick out a book. Let's spend you know, X amount of time picking it out, X amount of time reading it. You know, talk about responsibility, about bringing it back and all that good yeah. stuff. <laughs> or figure out a way to download the music. <laughs> yeah. But there's always something going on. And the great thing is we have such a vibrant and supportive library system that this is an activity in and of itself anytime you want to go. Yeah. Monday through... Uh, Tuesday through Saturday. Tuesday through Saturday. Yes. And now with we offer so much available through our web page that mm -hmm. it's almost virtual 24-7. Yes. Uh, the music, which Sean is yeah. so attracted <laughs> to. I checked them all out. Yeah. It's <laughs> available e-books. A lot of our databases, as long as you have a valid library card, you can access at 3 o'clock in the morning. You have a question, hey, what is the answer to? You can turn on your phone, your tablet, your computer. Go to the library webpage, and we have a resource, be it an encyclopedia, as a specific database that can help you get the answer to what you're looking for. Or it's just, hey, I want to read something. I finished my book. It's raining. It's late. I don't want to go out. Oh, I'll just download another book. So we so we cool. still offer the traditional print-based literacy, but we also offer so much more now. Mm -hmm. So we've got like two minutes left on the yeah. show. Um, and what's the website again? Oh, you said Google St. Lucie. St. <laughs> Lucie County Library System. Right, right. That's all you have to type easy. in. It'll be the it's first easy. one. Yeah. Right, right. You've got it. All right. So make sure you Google that. But uh, with the with the minute or so left, for the family that's going to go to the library for the first time ever and go get a card, they're going to go and get a library card. What do you suggest they do once they get their library card? Well, they got to check out. Just check yeah, out a book, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Use it. Take a Just tour of the it. branch, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and make sure that everyone Everybody's leaves with a book. Everybody's got to check something out. Yes. <laughs> All right. Visit yeah. multiple locations. There you go. We oh, yeah, find that too. most people tend to live within an equal distance of one to two locations. Um, our newest location, the Lewis Branch, which is more out west, has hit a big wealth of growth in the county that happened most recently. So that's our westernmost, I want to say, and that's hitting a whole new audience that real-time traffic was just difficult during mm -hmm. peak hours to get to our other locations. So now we're seeing a ton of new users, which that's is always awesome. wonderful. And if you haven't gotten a card yet, please come visit us. We'd love to see you. That's Say right. hello. You can tell them we sent you. <laughs> there you go. Right? Blaine Ashley. It's all good. That's okay. We'd we're love okay to see you. That. Do you remember going to the library when you were a kid? I do, all the time. My mom was a teacher, so she was off in the summer, and we went all summer long. Yeah. You know, we were talking before we went on the air. Mark and I share having grown up in Indianapolis. Yeah. And I remember going to the Carmel Library because it was close to where my mom worked, and we wanted to check out another library. And I, I remember. When you were talking, I got the I remember. I remember I checked out a book about Rod Crew. You probably don't know who Rod Crew is, but you probably know who Rod Crew is, the baseball player. One of the greatest book hitters report. of all time. That's right. That's right. So by all means, check out your public library. There's so many activities. Check out their calendar. If you're looking for something to do on a weekend, I can personally vouch for the Lego time. It's a yes. great, great time. It's fun. Be sure to check it out. Just Google St. Lucie Public St. Lucie County Public Library. First link that hits on there, and you'll be on your way. All right, that's Thank our show. You. Thank you so Thank much you for, for coming us. on. We're out of time. Remember, it's a weekly radio program, a monthly television show. Remember, it's our children, our community, our future. We're all in this together. We'll see you next time.